Hey everyone, I'm Brett and welcome to Nightwood Guns. Today I am so excited to share with you the EDC S belt from Tier 1 Concealed. If you currently carry an appendix, get ready to throw all of your other belts in the trash can. That's how much of a game changer this belt is. And of course, with that kind of glowing praise, I have to preface this review that Tier 1 Concealed did not send me this belt. I purchased this with my own money and I'm reviewing it as a consumer. Now, while this belt is, in my opinion, the best appendix carry belt ever created, it does have a few trade-offs, so be sure to stick around towards the end of the video where I talk about what those trade-offs may be because it might sway you one way or the other if you're thinking about this belt, especially at its price range. Before we hop into the video, I've seen some enormous channel growth recently, so there are a lot of new subscribers out there. Just wanna say hello, I appreciate you. If you'd like to support the channel further, the links in the description below are the place to be. I wrote two awesome short novels. If you're looking for something to read and you wanna support the channel, feel free to check out the links to Amazon to buy copies of my books. And of course, if you want to support the channel, more directly, there is always my Patreon. I really, truly appreciate all of my patrons. The channel exists because of you guys. Other than that, be sure you are subscribed to the channel because next weekend I'm going to have my full review on DPM recoil reduction systems. It's going to be an awesome video, so make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned. It also really helps with my videos. If you leave a comment down below, if you can't think of anything to ask or say, just leave an emoji because that helps too. Now it's time to hop into looking at the EDC S belt from Tier 1 Concealed, my new favorite EDC belt that was made in conjunction with Hunter Constantine. Now, Brett, I thought you were really happy with your Core Essentials belt. What happened? The Core Essentials belt is still 100% good to go. I still recommend it. And to be honest, I wasn't planning on buying the EDC S belt when Tier 1 Concealed announced it, but then I just happened to sign on right when it went live and I saw they were still in stock and I panic bought one. And I am so glad that I did because this is a belt I didn't even know I needed. My thought process was I invested in my core belt and that's been 100% good to go. Uh, they were pitching the EDCS belt as being like a belt for more comfort. And I was like, I'm plenty comfortable in my core belt. I don't need to drop a hundred plus dollars on another EDC belt. But when this showed up and I started testing it, this really changed the game for me. So the deal with this belt is the front is very stiff, very rigid. You can see it has an insert in the front there, and that is gonna be where your holster sits, right at the front for appendix carry. And then the back side of the belt is stretchy. Now, the reason I was originally gonna skip this belt is my subscribers know I carry over five pounds of crap in my holster on the daily. And I'm thinking with this stretchiness in the back, it's probably not gonna support the weight of the gun very much because I feel like it would droop down in the front. But my FOMO, fear of missing out for any boomers that subscribe to me, got the better of me and I ordered it anyways. So with the front being rigid and the back being stretchy, the attachment system instead of a buckle is actually this hook and loop system right here. So this is gonna give you adjustability on the fly. So for example, I wear mine in the middle loop. You have three loops to choose from. And if you feel like you've eaten too much or you're, I don't know, you're sitting in the car, you feel like you need to loosen your belt for whatever reason, it's just as easy as unplugging this from the loop. It's easier when it's on you. Unplugging this from the loop and just plugging it into one further back to make it a little looser on you. Now that actually mimics the versatility of something like the core belt that is easy to adjust on the fly. Granted, it's not as adjustable and not as easy as the core belt, but it's certainly better than nothing and still offers you that on the fly adjustability that I praise the core for. And just in case anyone is curious, no, these loops are not stretchy. You cannot put shotgun shells in there like a bandolier. It was the first thing that I tried, so minor negative for that. So while you have this on the fly adjustability with those loops, you also have some adjustability back here on the stretchy part. So if you need to give yourself a little more or a little less, just know that there's some leeway with the strap on the back. This belt also comes in two sizes, the small and the normal person. You can check Tier 1 Conceal's website to see what inch waist dictates which belt you should buy. Uh, but you know that my 28 inch waist jailbait ass got the small one. Now, if you watch my Core Essentials video, you'll know my biggest complaint with the core belt is how bulky that buckle is and how uncomfortable it can be with those you know, locking screws, that big steel bulge right there. It can really dig into you and on top of that, that buckle can actually print. It's definitely very sturdy and I appreciate that, but I don't like that it can stick out and poke you a little bit. In lieu of that buckle, this system they have here is extremely low profile, so much so that printing is a thing of the past and comfort is the number one priority. This was the first thing that I noticed, this extremely thin and lightweight material is just so comfortable 
and so concealable. Speaking of comfort, this stretchiness in the back made me realize how uncomfortable I actually was on the daily and I just didn't even realize it. Once I started carrying with the EDCS belt, I actually felt a complete relief of pressure uh, on my glutes, my upper glutes, my lower back, my hips. Uh, it was just like a weight was lifted off of it because I mean, it kind of literally was. The best way I can describe it is literally walking around, driving my car, sitting down, bending over. It was just a wave of constant relief having carried stiff belts like the Core and the Wilderness Tactical for so many years. And on top of that, it turns out that my fears of this thing not being supportive enough for my heavy carry setup were totally wrong. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw this EDCS belt on along with the Axis Elite and the Staccato, the five pounds of gear that I wear on my belt daily so you can see how it carries and how it conceals. Now, for those of you who are new to my channel and you're like, oh my God, how are you concealing that full-size staccato under just a t-shirt? Uh, here's a link to my Axis Elite review. That is the holster from Tier 1 Concealed. It is all in the holster. Now, as you can see, even though the back of this belt is stretchy, it's not causing the gun to droop or spill out over my pant line. Uh, it offers the same stability that a stiffer belt would. And that even goes for drawing and reholstering. And that was actually the number one thing that surprised me about this belt is I thought that since it was stretchy in the back that for sure it was going to droop in the front, but it actually holds up the weight perfectly. And as you can see over here, this buckle system is just so low profile and it's actually really comfortable. Something that I complained about with the Core Essentials belt is that I actually had to move the buckle around to the back of my body because it was stabbing me in my hip bone. Well, with this, there's nothing to stab me. This is so comfortable and super concealable. And of course, it's the stretchy part back here that offers me that absolute wave of relief, especially in my hips and my upper glutes that normally just have an absolute spasm digging in right there because of that weight just tugging on the back of my pants. Now, granted, it's something that you get used to and you don't even feel it anymore, but now that I felt this, I don't think I could ever go back. Now, this front portion that is reinforced and stiff, there's enough surface area for it to engage the wing or the claw of your holster, along with the bumps on the mag carrier of a uh, tier one concealed Axis Elite. So it's still engaging the holster in those points for maximum concealability while offering just, I mean, cloud-like comfort. I feel like this is turning into like a my pillow commercial or something, but it really does feel that good. All right, we're back. So in my opinion, this belt gets as close to a 10 out of 10 as possible. It has addressed all of the issues that I had with previous belts that I loved, including the Core and the Wilderness Tactical. It is simple, it's comfortable, and it has enough support to carry even a heavy gun like mine. Even something as silly as sitting down, just that bending over motion, that back just stretching with you instead of fighting you, this rigid hula hoop in your belt loops. Now that I know what this comfort feels like and I can vouch for how sturdy and well-built and efficient this belt is, this is going to be my number one recommendation for EDC belts moving forward. Get on the list at Tier 1 Concealed because this is going to be the latest Unobtainium. I'm really sorry about making you spend more money and I know that I keep recommending Unobtainium like the Radiant Ramjet Afterburner and the Acro P2, but there's a reason this stuff is Unobtainium and that's because it really is that great. All right, nothing is perfect, and even though I give this belt as close to a 10 out of 10 as humanly possible for an EDC belt, I do wanna talk about some drawbacks, trade-offs, and some negatives. Just because I think this belt is the greatest thing ever doesn't mean it is gonna be the best belt for you, so let's hop into it. So first of all, while I still have the belt on, as far as these quick adjustments go, and even putting the belt on and off, if you are arthritic or have weak, painful hands, um, this is going to be a difficult belt for you to use because it's, it takes quite a bit of hand strength to stretch this thing out and uh, undo the loop. So even as far as you see how this just immediately shot back, that's because of how stretchy I want this thing to be. So just for the sake of camera, I'm going to skip this loop. So basically you have to feed this thing through your belt loops and then stretch, 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 stretch and put this right in the loop. And that's gonna require finger strength. So like I said, if you have arthritis in your hands, this belt probably not gonna be a good fit for you. Now, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. This is not difficult to do, this is easy. I'm just saying it requires some finger dexterity and strength to make it happen. If you have even below average hand strength, this is gonna be a cakewalk for you. Just, I like to keep people in mind that are arthritic because a lot of them need firearms to defend themselves and a comfortable belt might be appealing to them. So just something to be aware of. Another challenging thing about this belt is gonna be sitting down and take a fat dump. 
So normally with the core belt, you can just loosen this sucker up and then pants down, just kind of leave it on. But this guy, it's gonna take some figuring out for your body because even for me, loosening it up, even a single notch on the fly still makes the belt too tight for me to realistically get down. So what I've been doing is I've actually been unhooking it and hooking it onto a belt loop so that I can have enough space to get my pants down. Again, it's gonna take some figuring out for you and your wardrobe, your body, uh, but just know that it, you're losing some convenience with something like the core. But of course, it's a trade-off for the comfort and how low profile the belt is. And this can of course lead to awkward moments teaching somebody else how to take your belt off because it's really easy to teach them the cheat code of the core essentials. And of course, everybody knows how a normal belt works. But remember when I said this thing takes some hand strength and finger dexterity? You're probably gonna be taking off your own belt. All right, back again, round two. Now, if you haven't noticed, I'm having to get really nitpicky finding potential negatives on this belt uh, because that's how incredibly well thought out it is. It's one of those things where you look at it and you're like, oh God, why didn't I think of that and invent it? Now, something else that I noticed carrying my heavy ass setup versus something like a P365XL, something very lightweight, even though the stiffness of this belt is more than enough to support my staccato with a spare magazine, when I start running or jumping or clambering over things, that's when you can start to feel it bouncing a little bit. Now, granted, that in no way affects function of the belt. It's just, you know, something to be aware of. With a heavier gun, you might notice some bouncing in it while you're running or moving quickly. Maybe you're doing some hardcore parkour, jumping rooftop to rooftop, just to know that you might get some bounce out of it. But again, that doesn't impede its function whatsoever. But carrying the lighter guns, um, I didn't notice that at all. So now we've got the two biggest negatives of this belt. And in my opinion, those other things are just observations. These two are the only two negatives as far as this belt goes. Number one is that it is only for appendix carry. The way that this is designed, it's got appendix carry in mind. Could you use it to carry behind the hip? Yeah, but you could also use a unicycle to get you to and from work. That doesn't necessarily make it the best option. That's where I would recommend going with Core Essentials or Wilderness Tactical. Now, the biggest negative about this belt is its price. It's $115 plus your typical shipping and handling. So you're looking at like $130 shipped for this belt. And this is where I get a little hesitant, guys, because, you know, I'm looking at how this thing is built and I'm looking for the $115 and I feel like I'm getting a little shy. I think what it boils down to is these things aren't mass produced and everyone's got to get paid. And on top of that, the market dictates and these things sold out in minutes. So I'd say they're probably priced appropriately. Now, something that I will be keeping an eye on as I continue to test this belt is its durability. So far, I've not seen any signs of premature wear. The stitching appears to be very high quality. The way that they put the insert in there as well, this thing looks like it was well-crafted. You can see the stitching here along with the loops, the stretchy webbing on the back. So far, I've had zero issues with this belt. If anything changes, I will be doing an update video, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel. So if anything happens with this belt, I can keep you posted. If not, I'll do an update video after like a year of carrying this thing so you can see what it looks like after a year of carrying it every single day. But as of right now, I've tested this belt enough to fully recommend it. It gets the Nightwood Guns stamp of approval as a truly badass, comfortable and concealable belt. This is my number one recommendation for anybody who carries appendix. And also since this belt is the new hotness, if you don't have it, nobody's gonna think that you're cool. You don't wanna be that kid at school showing up with a Game Boy when the Game Boy Color is out. God, that'd be the worst. You wanna be the kid with that clear purpley Game Boy Color. That one was the shit. If along our journey, you forgot to leave a comment or an emoji down below, now is your opportunity. You can also hit that thumbs up, like button. Guys, it was so good to see you again, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I'm Brett, and this was Nightwood Guns. Nightwood out.